All right, so it's kind of late in the day here at Pescadero, about 5 p.m., but uh, the colors are so beautiful right now, kind of muted. I'm gonna do a 12 by 16 and try to keep it to about an hour. And I'll try to share as much of the process with you guys as possible. Let me show you what I'm thinking. All right, so this is a scene I painted before, but usually I'll kind of crop it, uh, you know, like cut off the rocks here, focus on the, um, this water line and then some waves. But today I wanna include some of the foreground and this whole rock so that there'll be water on the left and right hand side. And uh, we'll see what happens. There's some beautiful colors out in here. I wanna uh, focus on those, the beautiful blue greens. So toned in burnt sienna and I'm gonna sketch in burnt sienna as well. Just thin with odorless mineral spirits. All right, so I'll be totally honest with you. I have doubts about this composition but I think that's all right. I mean, it's fun to actually try, you know, things where you're not sure if it's gonna work out or not. And I think it's important to always experiment. I, I try to do my best to do that. We get into our little comfortable habits and I, uh, you know, often will not, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll kind of repeat things that I know that work. Uh, let's see, there's a bunch of rocks down in here. All right, so, you know, doing my normal thing here, which is just, uh, you know, kind of sketching in large shapes, and then I can refine those large shapes. Uh, there's not much going on in the sky, pretty foggy, so I'll keep the horizon high. I might, I might put some waves, some kind of like an additional wave out in this area, something like that to create some interest over there. I wanna look for patterns in the rocks that can kind of lead the eye into the composition. This little like line right here, I could kind of use that. So this is all gonna be light colored like this and I've not had good luck uh, doing that, putting like the light sandy, uh, sandy colored rocks in the foreground. All right, so I've sort of refined the shapes a bit, and now I'm gonna start blocking in the darks. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm squinting at the scene, and as you can see, there's like a dark pattern right along here. Obviously, it's overcast, so I don't have any shadows to work with, so I'm just gonna build on these dark shapes. Um, there's also a bit of a dark edge over here that kind of defines this rock, and also separates this rock from the foreground, like right along in here, so. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna try to simplify this shape and just block it in quickly. And there's some rocks over here as well, so kind of just suggest them. Still not a lot of detail, just light and dark at this point. And I'm kind of compressing the rock here. You can see it's much bigger, but I'm gonna kind of compress it to make it fit into the scene. All right, so next I've mixed up a few colors for the water. Uh, starting out with titanium white, ultramarine blue, and some burnt sienna. And then this one has a little bit more um, ultramarine blue in it, so it's a little bit bluer. And then this one here is kind of a blue-green, and I'm using a guest color here, which is uh, cerulean blue pure. I mix that with uh, titanium white and then a bit of cadmium yellow medium. All right, so it's definitely grayer out towards the horizon, so I'll start with the gray mixture up top. And then I'm noticing there's a little bit more green as it comes closer. So I will start adding that. And then I'm leaving areas unpainted uh, where there'll be white water. And I can see that this, this value might be a little bit too light. You know, I want the white water to be able to stand out. But for now, I'm just gonna cover the panel quickly. All right, now I'm actually seeing some purple tones out there. I'm gonna to try to quickly grab those. So mixing in a little bit of dioxine purple with my dark mixture and some titanium white. And that's right in here. Definitely too saturated, but that's all right. It's, it's, uh, it's a good start. Also some dark down here as well. And I'm using a number six natural bristle to kind of scrub all this in. 
All right, water line there. Kind of goes up like that. Okay, now I need to need to paint the sky. So I'm going to mix in some uh, Dioxane purple into my gray mixture here. So after I get the whole panel covered, what I'm going to do is walk back and I'm going to look at the painting and I'm going to look at the scene and see what kind of color adjustments I need to make. All right, so I'm going to mix up a color for some of these uh, cracks in the rocks here. I'm starting off with some burnt sienna, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of this dark mixture here. And I'm not worried about getting these exact. I'm just looking for an interesting pattern. So just kind of looking down here and using it as inspiration, but I'm not going to try to duplicate it exactly. Um, part of what I want is I want some directional lines kind of leading the eye into the composition. I kind of like this one here. This one I might want to have more, maybe like, I don't know, maybe a little straighter so that the lines are a little bit more directional, like kind of pointing out that way. And now I need to mix up a color for this, sort of a warm gray. So I'll start with titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. All right, let's see what that looks like. Kind of dark but I'm gonna go with it anyway. I can always lighten it up. And a lot of times when I'm doing paintings like this, I try to keep the expectations low because, you know, I'm just experimenting with a new composition just to see if it'll work. I mean, I do like the idea of having a foreground in the painting. I think it creates a sense of depth. But as I've mentioned, I've had mixed results with that kind of thing, but you never know unless you try. Sometimes, you know, you'll make, you'll make a discovery that can lead to a successful series of paintings. That's happened to me. I mean, my wave paintings started out as kind of an experiment on a gray day. It just like, you know, the, the light was flat and uninspiring, and, but I still wanted to paint. So I thought, all right, I'm just going to do like a wave panorama. And I can't remember if the first one worked out. I think it made it might have taken a couple tries, but the first one, even if it didn't work out, it was an enjoyable experiment. So I decided to do it again. And then, you know, at some point it actually worked. All right. So I may mix a little bit of additional gray from my dark mixture here into the mixture I use for the foreground. All right, and we'll see how this works. There's also some blues like right in here. You know, mix in some blue to push the gray towards a bluer color. And then the top is kind of a blue color too, so. All right, I want a kind of exaggerated blue-green for out in the distance, out along the rocks. Maybe it'll draw the eye out there, we'll see. A lot of beautiful blue-greens right out in here. And that's not very saturated, but... All right, so now let's step back. I can darken those rocks quite a bit. As you can see, the values here are really dark. A lot of contrast with the white water. So, yeah, so I can go quite a bit darker. And how is the shape? Yeah, that curve right there, that curve, pretty close. All right, so I've mixed up another dark mixture using ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. Little bit of liquid, but I'm gonna kind of keep this mixture thick. Uh, looking for the darkest darks, which seem to be right in here. Still squinting at the subject. Uh, it's dark along the water line here too. I find that when I squint and work quickly, you know, I don't, I'm not thinking about things. I'm just thinking about shapes. And I end up painting a lot better when I do that. And then just paying attention to how those, all those shapes relate to each other. And whether you're getting a please, like a pleasing arrangement. But right, this actually goes out a little bit further. That. And this kind of comes down. And I want to create, there's like some little, you know, little different shapes with the rocks. 
I don't want to get too detail oriented, but I do want to have some variety. Out in the distance, there are some rocks that are pretty dark too, coming out like that. I may want to lighten the value of these to push them out further. We'll see. Another rock over here. All right, so for the lighter rocks in the distance, I'm actually adding to my dark mixture um, some alizarin crimson and some titanium white to lighten it up just a little bit. There's like a plane along the top like this. Painting on gray days can be challenging, but one of the nice things is that the colors are pretty stable. All right, so this grouping of rocks here is a bit bigger than what I've got here, but I'd rather include some waves coming through there and some white water. So I'm gonna establish a white water pattern and I'm kind of tinting it an aqua green color using uh, titanium white, some uh, phthalo blue, and a touch of cadmium yellow medium. Kind of an interesting pattern right there. I try to mimic the motion often of the water. Kind of a wave coming in right now like that. There's actually some dark areas at the base of these rocks. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave it kind of like that. And I could already see that I'm gonna need to darken the water around the white water, but that's okay. That's part of the reason I'm painting in the white water now is so that I can determine the value for the rest of the water. All right, so for the darker water, I'm going with a mixture of ultramarine blue, cobalt teal, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. And I'm going with a mid-tone, uh, like a mid-tone blue-green here. My palette is a mid-tone, so I'm using that as a gauge. It's kind of a wave pattern right there. And I can see already like that there's a, a better relationship between the, you know, the, the color of the water now, or the value of the water, and the white water. Actually, right in this area is some darker purple colors, which I think is like submerged seaweed. Uh, there's some dark kind of waves coming over on this side as well. Okay, and then maybe even in here, the color of the water is constantly changing. One minute it's kind of purple, and then it's green, and then, you know, and as challenging as that is, that's part of what I love about this kind of painting. All right, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of purple into the green for those areas with submerged seaweed. Just using dioxazine purple, mixing it into the green mixture. I might punch up that purple a little bit, but this is a good place to start. So I've switched over to a number eight natural bristle flat. I have a bunch of brushes, but I'm always just kind of grabbing whatever and experimenting to see what works. All right, so I'm going with a blue-gray mixture here of uh, ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a bit of burnt sienna. This will be for the distance here. And I'm actually seeing more red in that. So I'm gonna add a touch of alizarin crimson. All right, now I need more green in it. So I'll add a little bit of this green mixture to it. All right, that's a little better. And because there's a lot of fog out there, I wanna keep the value really light. All right, I'm adding some titanium white and just some gray mixture I found on my palette. Uh, to lighten the sky a little bit so that I get, you know, at least a little bit of contrast between the sky and the water. All right, so at the base of the rocks in the water, there is a kind of a dark purple color. I'm using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but I'm leaning it more towards blue or kind of a purplish color right at the base of the rocks right in here. So move it along the water line right there as well. All right, so there's beautiful blue greens in the water. I wanna kind of punch those up, maybe exaggerate them a little bit. So I'm using some uh, phthalo blue, titanium white, and a bit of yellow ochre. Now I'm starting to keep the paint a little bit thicker. And there's really no specific pattern to this out here. You don't have to be worried about being too careful. I'm just trying to capture some of that energy or duplicate some of that energy. All right, there doesn't seem to be much green out beyond this line. Maybe just, maybe a few hints of it. You know, after it passes this rock here, it kind of just gets to be sort of gray. And there are occasional waves that roll in, so I might try to, I'm feeling like there needs to be something out here. So I'm gonna tint the white with some ultramarine blue to kind of 
push it back into the distance. I don't want it to be too bright. These are just gonna be simple suggestions. Actually, now that I'm looking out there, they almost look to be yellow, kind of a yellowish color. So I might just, I might touch them up and tint them yellow, but we'll see. There's also kind of a dark line along the horizon, kind of a dark grayish blue. And then in here, lots of atmosphere and lots of reflection it's like reflecting the sky so there's kind of like a light gray along the surface a lot of times when i'm mixing colors and i'm looking for a gray i'll just kind of reach over and grab just some random colors uh until i get a gray that i'm you know that that looks like it'll work all right i think this will work All right, so here's what I finished up with. And I think there's some things that really worked out. There's a nice sense of atmosphere here. Uh, so it does feel like, you know, it goes off into the fog or whatever. You know, like the, the distance does seem foggy and atmospheric. Uh, I do like the colors, you know, the, in the water. Also, I think the foreground having this, you know, foreground included at the bottom of the picture, I think that really does help especially with the directional brushwork that kind of leads the eye into the composition. It's really difficult to create form when you don't have light and shadow. And since it was foggy, you know, this rock, this prominent rock right in the, in the foreground, I was really struggling to create any kind of interesting definition. Uh, and, and that's exactly the problem that I assumed I would have. Uh, and I've, I've struggled with that before. I did try to you know, I had some strokes that were vertical along the side here and then more horizontal along the top to try to use brushwork to create form. And uh, I think that sort of worked, you know. Um, so overall, this was a good experiment and it, it was beautiful out there, not too windy, really comfortable. And one nice thing about painting when it's overcast is that the light stays pretty stable. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos on there, materials list, that sort of thing. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.